welcome to Georgia Southern Football 2000. I'm Ted Byrne, along with Coach Paul Johnson. And Coach, last week a great homecoming win and a, a good win for us in the conference, but now we're on the road this week. Well, last week was last week. It was a great win. We had a great crowd, and uh, it's just a whole uh, a good day for college football. But uh, put that behind you, and today we're here in Charleston to try to get ready to play a tough Citadel team. And this place has always been a tough place for Georgia Southern to play. Well, it really has. Uh, two years ago, I think we were down 27-7 in the third quarter, and you know, we've talked to our guys all week. Uh, I think this game's going to show our level of maturity, whether we'll try to take it up to the level that we're capable of playing or whether we'll play to a different level. Also, we're a little beat up and banged up, too, uh, having to play without a few regulars. Yeah, we are. Uh, Robert LeBlanc, we left back. Hopefully he'll get healthy. And uh, a lot of other guys have some bumps and bruises. But, uh, you know, this late in the year, that's going to happen. And, uh, you know, we lost a guy Thursday at the walkthrough playing. They were... Uh, Daryl Roundtree broke his collarbone just throwing the ball around. So, uh, you know, it's been that kind of uh, last couple of weeks. Coach, what about practice this week? Has it been good? I thought our mental focus was good this week. Uh, you know, there wasn't as much pizzazz as, as you'd like, and we've talked about that, and it'll be interesting to see how we come out today. All right, so it will be Georgia Southern and the Citadel. We'll have first-half highlights coming up. But first, we have to check this week's Coca-Cola Play of the Day. everybody and welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2000. I'm Ted Byrne along with coach Paul Johnson and I guess the old phrase coach uh, an ugly win is better than a pretty loss. Well I, I guess you have to say that certainly anytime you can win on the conference in the road it's uh, you need to be happy but uh, you temper that with uh, a little bit of disappointment in the way that we perform. Well also we talked about before the ball game this has always been a tough place for us to play. Well, I think it's a tough place to play and where it falls on the schedule. I, yeah. You know, we come off playing Appalachian, which is always a big game. And, uh, you know, I didn't do a very good job getting them ready to play. And, and they didn't do a good job getting themselves ready to play emotionally. Well, we get the toss. We defer to the second half, kick off to the Citadel. And uh, they start to trying to move the ball pretty well. Well, they move it right down the field and, uh, you know, hit some plays, running the option like we hadn't seen it before. And, uh you know, end up punting us out, I think, on about the four-yard line. Coach, is it, is it a misnomer for us to believe that we should defend the option a little better? Because we really don't see that kind of option in practice, do we? Well, we, you, you don't play against each other in practice, but uh, certainly we should have a be better advantage than somebody who uh, is a drop-back passing team because you've got scout team kids who can run it and and uh, you get a better look in practice. But no, we don't play against each other a great deal. Georgia Southern would swap punts with the Citadel, and on the second possession of the game Georgia Southern would get the ball and a pitch to uh, Adrian didn't really work uh, on a fourth down situation or a third down situation so we have to go with a 36 yard field goal right we got great field position off the punt return by Ant Williams and uh, you know we uh, just turn a guy loose on the on the option uh, they roll up to cover two and we don't just turn the corner loose so uh, he comes in and hits us for a lost yardage play and we had to settle for a field goal. So with a little under five minutes left to go in the first quarter, it was 3 nothing. The Citadel would get the ball, but their possession uh, would end up with an interception by Nick Ga Nate Gates, his first of the day. Right, and, uh, you know, Nate did a good job covering the guy and uh, stepped in front and made a big play for us. So then Georgia Southern would get the ball back and on the 42-yard line and uh, would s select the punt after being held uh, defensively, but then that punt got blocked. Right, and I think we got a holding penalty in that series that backed us up, and uh, you know they just they came through. And uh, kids on the sideline will be interesting to see what happens when I look at the film. Said that uh, one of the guys grabbed our tackle and pulled him. Another guy ran outside and blocked the punt. And uh, if that's what happened, that'll be disappointing that that didn't get called. So then the Citadel would get the ball on the Georgia Southern 30, and uh, they would have to settle for an attempted 48-yard field goal, but Gates gets in and blocks it. Right, Nate did a nice job all day rushing off the edge, and uh, 
that was certainly a big play for the defense to come out uh, after a blocked punt and hold them without a score. And while Ryan Hedden would return that down to the Citadel 40, we were three and out on that, ended up uh, trying to punt, but then a penalty by the Citadel gave us new life, and then we uh, spring it for a first down on a fourth and one. Adrian Peterson picks up five. Right. Uh, once the, we got the penalty, it was fourth and less than one, and I just felt like that uh, the way the game was going, I, I was trying to do something to jumpstart our football team, and uh, I think on that drive, actually, we went for it on fourth down about three times. Indeed, and Georgia Southern would go 83 yards in 13 plays, and he'd have six minutes and 18 seconds, and finally would get in on a J.R. Revere two-yard touchdown run. Right on the goal line, Jay did a nice job making the guy miss, uh, just a little solid option down there, and we missed a couple of blocks right at the point of attack, but Jay was able to get it in there. Citadel would get the ball back on their 37 and uh, would break us for a couple of pitches. One pass for 13 yards and then a pitch uh, to Murphy that would get them 13. And uh, they would end up going in with Mahoney on a one-yard run. All right, they put together a nice little drive. And, uh, you know, for the most part, I thought we played pretty good on defense. Uh, so Citadel wasn't a, you know, had a lot of success offensively this year. But, uh, you know, we still missed a ton of tackles. They went 63 yards in eight plays. That made it with about 2.36 left to go in the uh, first half. Made it 10-7, and Georgia Southern would get the ball back on the 10. And a kind of a wild series of, of the events that led almost to halftime. Georgia Southern would end up having to punt the ball away, and uh, the Citadel would just run a couple of plays, and halftime would uh, come up, and it was 10-7. I think a wild series of events would be a pretty good description of what happened right before half. It was indeed. Lots of timeouts and lots of concern on both sides. So uh, that was the uh, way it would be at halftime, 10-7 with Georgia Southern in the lead. And we'll take a look at second half highlights right after we take this timeout. their bios in the media guide still not enough information well when all else fails head into the stands for a heart-to-heart -heart discussion with mom and dad when Freddie was little I was never gonna let him play football never he was a soccer player and a baseball player and a wrestler and I, I swore he would never touch a football and we lived in Arizona we moved here and I did the mistake of going to a student life football game He's doing really well. He's uh, he does he works extra hard in the weight room and on the field and in the classroom. Right? Where does he get that work ethic from? Uh, from his father, of course. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people don't know this, but Tom's a martial artist and he's a blue belt in uh, Ishiro Karate and he's doing very well. He's going to be going up for his black belt in another year. And also uh, he went to Riverside Military Academy and that really helped him in his studies and also in his sports. In high school, Michael played baseball. Matter of fact, Mama wanted him to continue the baseball into the college field, but he got a college scholarship, so now he's at GSU, but real proud of him. And he also played basketball and threw uh, discus and shot put in track. And which one was his best sport besides football? Whatever season it was. And of course, a good reporter will dig up the really juicy stories as well. When he was little, he used to fight with his sister. She'd get him in a headlock and he'd lie to her and tell her he had to go to the bathroom. She'd let go and he'd walk for one. <laughs> well, to me, personal Bam Bam. Uh, you remember the Flintstones and Bam Bam? That's my Bam Bam. And he, does, he hugs you and when he hugs you, he squeezes all life out of you, but you don't want to stop him, so you just kind of let him, let him hug you until he's all over. When 
Cajun was small and he used to go to his grandparents' house. They had this coffee table with a lot of little whatnots on it. He used to just rake them all off and just destroy them. <laughs> and his granddaddy used to call him Hurricane because he used to tear up everything. When Aiden is at home, one thing he likes to do is walk around and sing loud as he can and just make noises and just act silly. How does he sing? He sing all right. Not that good. Yeah, not that good, but he, he sings. Want it all in a university. I was in a little cover too, and I was hanging in the curl, and I knew I had a receiver behind me, and he kind of tried to pull it over my head, but I just jumped up and grabbed it, and I mean, luckily had a couple of blocks, like I said, and I, I was able to take it to the house. Yeah, he outdid me then. I mean, I'm gonna hear about it, so. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm happy for them. It scared me on the first one because they came in, they came in real quick, but we took care of that on the sideline, and and the line held them up real well. And and Chris is doing a great job holding, bird snapping, and and they let me do my job a lot easier. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2000. Ted Burner along with Coach uh, Paul Johnson. And Coach, uh, the second half we would get the kickoff, but uh, would stall a little bit on our first possession. Well, stall a lot. Uh, you know, we had third and less than a yard and uh, <coughs> ran a sneak. It felt like we got it. Uh, but when they marked it and we got the measurement, we were about two inches short. And once again, trying to jump start the team, I decided to go for it on fourth down. and. Uh, you know, we didn't make it. So then the Citadel would get the ball back on the Georgia Southern 28, and uh, they would uh, run their tailback on the opening play for about nine yards, but then we'd kind of shut down the quarterback on a couple of plays. Well, we got the quarterback uh, on a keeper, and they lost a couple yards, and then we really had to play play. They ran a little sweep play, and we had them in the backfield and missed another tackle, and I think they got a first down, and after that, we were able to hold them, and uh, they had to come in and kick a field goal. 36-yard field goal would be a good one. They went basically 11 yards and seven plays took three minutes and 22 seconds and at that point it would be a 10-10 ball game so then georgia southern would get the ball uh, on the uh, 42 and uh weather's got a great kickoff return uh, of about 38 yards to really put us in good field well he really did he hit it up in there hard and i think some guys up front got some nice blocks for him adrian peterson's first carry would be good for 10 and then uh, jr would follow him with 10 as well right and we were trying to run a little midline mix it in there and Felt like we had a little bit of a drive going there for a brief moment. But then it would stall, and Georgia Sun would punt the ball, but it would roll dead at the three-yard line, so special teams doing their job there. Really a nice punt to pin them down inside the 10-yard line, and, uh, you know, we got them down there this game inside the 10 and held them. And the Citadel would get the ball back on their own three and would end up having to punt from their end zone. And Georgia Southern would get the ball at the Citadel 47. And we had a, uh, a pitch to Zareem Walden that picked up four yards, but then we had a holding penalty. But we would come right back with a big 38-yard uh, pass completion to Chris Johnson. Right off play action and, uh, you know, a nice, uh, nice job of throwing and catching the ball. Adrian Peterson would go for five yards. And uh, on that after that run, Jr. would uh, rip it up for 12. And that would get us right down to the one. Right, and uh, you know we had first and goal from the one, I think, and uh, AP was able to slip it in on the right side. He got in, and that made it a 17-10 ball game. The Citadel then would get the ball back on the 28, and uh, they would uh, fumble, but then Georgia Southern was offside, uh, and then uh, it would basically be a possession for the Citadel that would end in a punt. But a couple of great plays, one by uh, Oglesby and one by Michael Youngblood on that series, making some key stops. Right, I think Colton Oglesby made a nice play we had the quarterback trapped and he broke a couple tackles and Carlton was able to run him down before he got started. Georgia Southern would then get the ball back on the 27 and they would march 49 yards in eight plays and a score on a 42 yard field goal by Rob Baronis and in that one we had another uh, pass uh, that worked very well to uh, to Weathers. Right we hit him on a little post wheel off play action and had a big play and really had something going and uh, I think we had third and about two and came out and made a bad pitch on the option and lost about nine yards. So after the uh, field goal, that would then make it uh, a 20 to 10 ball game as Georgia Southern went 49 yards in eight plays and eight up three minutes and 46 seconds. The Citadel would get the ball back on the 21, but then Nate Gates would get his second interception of the day. Right, and uh, again, good coverage by Nate. He stepped in, in there and caught the ball in his hands and held on to it. 
And even though Georgia Southern couldn't really move the ball very much on that possession, it would be a uh, punt that would uh, roll dead at the two-yard line. And once again, Scott Shelton did a great job of pinning them back there deep. And then on the next possession of the Citadel, they had it on the three. It would uh, They would break a few plays on a couple of pitches and a couple of passes, but then Michael Youngblood would get his first college interception and go 78 yards. Who would have thought that? Well, who would have thought it? But that was a nice play by Mike, and uh, he picked up some good blocks down their sideline, and really a backbreaker that uh, kind of took him out of the game. So with 3.34 remaining in the fourth quarter, it would be Georgia Southern 27 and the Citadel 10. The Citadel would get the ball on the uh, kickoff, and uh, they get it on their own 25, and on the very first play of that series, Winston Hardison comes in with a big six-yard uh, sack on the quarterback. Yeah, as Winston seemed to do that all year when he gets in there and plays a little bit. He's done a great job rushing the passer, and uh, it's good to see somebody go in there and be a little bit excited. And then Georgia Southern would get the ball back with uh, not much time left uh, on the Citadel 18. And at that point in the game, I know it wasn't the game, but everyone on the sidelines and in the stands knew Adrian Peterson was not at his 100-yard mark. So you give the ball to Adrian on the first couple of, of plays, and he finally gets the, over the century mark. Well, finally, it was a real struggle. We knew he didn't have 100 yards. And He's done so much for us with the game out of reach. I was going to try to do what I could to, to make sure he got the 100 yards, and uh, it took three carries to get those six yards. He got 102, and you wisely uh, kind of let him stand on the sideline and watch the rest of the game. Right, and uh, at that point, we were really, I wasn't concerned about trying to score again. I was just, my big concern was to try to get him over 100, and uh, once we did that, uh, I was satisfied to take a knee. And that would be the final score as uh, Georgia Southern would uh, come out on top by a score of 27 to 10 and uh, it was a, really a game that was very physical because we had some some injuries in the game. Well it was we lost some offensive linemen early some guys got banged up and uh, you know it was a uh, with two teams who try to run the ball and run the option you know they got after each other pretty good there were some good hits. All right we'll take a look at our opponent of next week and be back with more final comments right after we take this time out. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 2000. Ted Byrne along with Coach Paul Johnson. Coach, uh, Everett goes off the field on a stretcher in the ball game. Uh, it was a kind of a, a bad hit where his head was up trying to make a block, and he, he kind of had his head snap backwards. But uh, I understand that he really wanted to come off the field on his own steam, but he said he kind of went numb in one of his arms. Well, I think when he first got hit, he kind of got a little stinger and went a little bit numb. And, uh, you know, the feeling came right back into it, and he, and he had feeling. But precautionary you know anytime you've got something like that you want to be careful so you know our uh, doctors and uh, training staff did a good job and yeah he was trying to get up and come off the field but uh, you know the x-rays checked out normal and he'll be back at practice on Monday. We'll see him at practice on Monday. Now next week we're at home and we're against East Tennessee State. Right uh, big game uh, playing for at least a share of the conference championship if we can find a way to win and hopefully we'll come back uh, with a little more focus and a little more intensity and uh, go back to work. I know uh, offensively anyway, I hope our guys are a little embarrassed. I am. And, uh, you know, we've got to go back and, and get to work. Not much yards on the, on the ground this uh, week, which is certainly not a, a hallmark of our team. We normally get a lot more offensive yards. Well, you'd like to think so. And, you know, and until you look at the film, it's hard to say, but I felt like we, we kind of got beat to the punch up front a little bit. East Tennessee State, they'll be tough. They'll be tough. I mean, they'll have a uh, a decent football team and uh, they're going to throw the ball around and be you know a lot more explosive offensively than the team we played today so we certainly got to get our offense back on track and defensively we should be in, in pretty good shape because most of the injuries really were to the offense yeah i don't think we lost anybody on defense today the injury uh, you know we'll know tomorrow but uh Hopefully we'll have everybody uh, back, and we're hoping maybe we can get Robert LeBlanc back next week, too. All right. We'll see you next week with the highlights of the Georgia Southern East Tennessee State game right here on Georgia Southern Football 2000. For Coach Paul Johnson, I'm Ted Byrne. See you next week. Georgia Southern Football with Coach Paul Johnson, brought to you in part by Coca-Cola, always Coca-Cola.
Rozier Ford, Lincoln Mercury, and Statesboro, the dealership that does business the right way. East Georgia Regional Medical Center, compassionate care without compromise. Hargrave Wireless, private, powerful, perfectly clear. And Sea Island Bank, the better way to bank.